isopropyl. So uh, that would be like a branched branch, where this is the parent, you got this coming off, and then something branching off of the branch. <laughs> isopropyl. Well, there's only two propyls, but when we get to the next number of carbons, which is four, there are four different types of butyl branch. A normal butyl would be where there's four carbons right in a row. And again, this is the parent over here. This would be a four-carbon branch coming off of the parent. Butyl. If the second of the four carbons is attached, that's called sec butyl, like the second carbon is attached. If the... <laughs> here's a nice one. If you have a carbon attached and then it's attached to the other three through the middle of the other three carbons, that's called isobutyl. And yet still, if you have the attaching carbon to the parent that's attached to three other methyl groups, there's four carbons there in the branch, that's called tert butyl. Tert is short for tertiary, which means attached to three. So uh, again, we'll spend a little bit more time on that. The book uh, mentions that too. There's a list of all these. It's obnoxious. I'm going to just take this up. I'm going to take it even up to here. This will be the last slide. Um, compounds can actually have their end carbons come around and fasten or bond to one another. I'll show you what I mean with a model after you're done writing this down. <coughs> Here's a molecular model of an organic compound. The black is carbon, the yellow is hydrogen. What is the name of this compound? Can you count them? Pentane. Yeah, there's five carbons, pentane. This would be a pentane model. Now, I do want you to also see, when we write the dot structure, and we just put the carbons all in a straight line, notice they're really not in a straight line. It's jagged. And the reason for that is because what we talked about yesterday, this Vesper theory, the electron pairs around each carbon are spreading out as far as they can. Each carbon is um, tetrahedral in shape, which means that the bond angle, I didn't mention the angles yesterday, you might remember, bond angle for tetrahedral is 109.5. Does that number kind of come back to you? 109.5. You learned it in Chem 1. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's not a 90 degree or 180 degree uh, bond. It's, it, it goes jagged. So it's totally okay if, if we have a structure on paper that does not reflect what the actual shape is of the molecule. It probably won't. It's kind of hard to draw uh, on paper what this actually looks like. But anyway, um, if the end carbons, this end and this end, uh, if this thing kind of rearranges itself and just twists, single bonds can twist, uh, if the end carbon, now I've, I've got them turned down so that if I take this hydrogen off here and this hydrogen off, then the, the two ends are the ones that I'm holding in my hand. If I bond them together, or if they just bond together, that makes a, a pentagon shape. 
ring structure. Each carbon has two hydrogens on it. We would call this cyclopentane. Not just pentane anymore. Pentane is a straight chain, what we call a straight chain, even though it's jagged. Uh, when it's a ring, it's cyclopentane. Is this saturated or unsaturated? It's a conflict, isn't it? Because it's got all single bonds, which indicates that it's saturated. But then, if this bond broke, each one could still get another hydrogen on it. This is actually an unsaturated compound. It's unsaturated. Even though all of the bonds are single bonds, uh, this thing, any uh, one of these two carbons could break, and you could put two other hydrogens on without adding any carbons. That makes it unsaturated. So anyway, uh, that's, that's just a little tiny thing. The big thing is this. Um, the fact that, uh, that a cyclic compound can exist, and the way that we represent them on paper, uh, this would be the correct way to represent This is cyclohexane, where there's six carbons making a ring. Each carbon has two hydrogens on it, just like each carbon has two hydrogens on this. This is very cumbersome to write out all of the six carbons and all 12 hydrogens uh, like that. What we, have, we in chemistry have done to shorten that is uh, when you have a cyclic compound, just the geometric shape of however many carbons are there uh, is made, and it's just understood that at each vertex is a carbon, and we don't even draw the hydrogens in there. So when you see a hexagon, it just means it's cyclohexane. Or pentagon would be cyclopentane. Now here's just another example of a cyclic compound. This would be a cyclopentane compound. There's five carbons in a ring. I didn't expand all the H's off. It just did CH2 all the way around. But except for this one, this carbon has a methyl group on it. So you can have a cyclic compound with a functional group attached. And the short way of writing that, since it's a five-membered ring, you just write it in a pentagon. And one of the corners of the pentagon, or one of the vertices, uh, has a methyl group. I was going to ask you that. I'm going to give you a moment, and I want you to just ponder it. Because I've given a name to this thing, and my question is going to be, is the name correct? Is the name correct? Should that be one methyl cyclopentane or just methyl cyclopentane? Do we need the one? I don't think we do. I think it would be redundant to put the one on here. Uh, redundant because if I had just one of these five carbons in the ring uh, having a methyl group attached to it, that automatically makes that carbon number one. You don't even have to put the one on. Now, if I were to add another methyl group, now do we have to number where the carbons are? Where these are? I think we do. Ah, I'm going to run out of time. Just very quickly. This would be dimethylcyclopentane. This would be dimethylcyclopentane. But they're not the same thing because this would be 1,2-dimethylcyclopentane. This is 1 3 so if you have two functional groups on a ring, you definitely need the number. If you only have one, though, you don't. Have a great weekend. Enjoy your time off because it's a marathon after this. Thank you.